I feel you next to me. You're warmer than the sun. <laughs> Your skin is ecstasy. <laughs> Our story's just begun. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm not a very good singer. <laughs> Kian is. It is my boyfriend, fiance. <laughs> Engagement ring. <laughs> oh, uh, Kian wrote the song. It, he's written loads, like hundreds. He, he used to be in a band. Oh, this was before I met him. I, I've seen the photos. Oh, he looks so sexy. <laughs> His skin is ecstasy. <laughs> I uh, met Kian at one of Talia's shows. Oh, um, Talia's my best friend. We were at art school together. She's quite a well-known painter now. Well, if you're in those circles. <laughs> Kian made the frames for her drawings. Oh, they were beautiful. The frames and the drawings. <laughs> Talia, she was over the moon when me and Kian started dating. She said, you two are perfect for each other. <laughs> and she was right. Well, we are. Everyone knows it. And when it became obvious that we were, you know going steady. Talia kept saying, marriage next, married next. And we were like, oh no, not ready for that yet. But then a couple of days ago, we told her, we're ready. <laughs> Our story's just begun. <laughs> the three of us went to Colour Me Moonlight to celebrate. Have you been there? Oh, it is that new club down by the canal. I like it because it's got a lot of quieter places where you can sit and talk. Lounge bar's my favourite. It's got these old-fashioned chaise lounge style things you can sit on. <laughs> I really like them. Talia's not a fan. She, she says they're not soft enough. And, and Kian, Kian doesn't have an opinion one way or the other. All he does is dance with everyone, anyone. They all fancy him, but I don't mind. He loves me. Only me. Forever and ever. <laughs> Oh, um, did I show you my engagement ring? <laughs> <laughs> we drank a bit too much. <laughs> well, too much for us. Me and Kian hardly drink at all. But Talia did buy a bottle of champagne, which was lovely of her and lovely to drink. But boy, oh, did me and Kian suffer in the morning. My head was pounding so much, I could hardly think. I said, let's get some fresh air. <laughs> We went to the park. Kian wore the t-shirt I bought him. It's got a photograph from the Hubble telescope on it. Nebula C112, otherwise known as the Ghost Nebula. It's really beautiful. <laughs> Kian wrote a song about it. Well, inspired by it. It's the one I've been singing. Well, trying to. <laughs> I feel you next to me. <laughs> Look, if you're wondering why I keep singing the same bit, it's because that's all Kian's written. And if I'm honest, and I can be because I love him, is so, so typical. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, Kian is incredibly talented. He could be a star, everyone says so, but the trouble is, he's a bit too laid back. Every time I try and push him, encourage him, <laughs> he says something like, we're all made of stardust, so I'm a star already. Or, even more irritating, K Sarah Sarah. I say, it'll only bloody Sarah if you make it Sarah, but. Oh, Kian, he. He just moseys along, doing bits and pieces to make money, working on building sites, singing odd nights in the pub, making frames for paintings. And he's happy no matter what he's doing. Talia calls him Mr. Contented. Which he is. Which is lovely. For him. <laughs> I just want so much more for him. You know? <laughs> Your skin is... <laughs> to be honest, my anger had practically gone by the time we got to the park. Mind you, I did take a few paracetamol. <laughs> Kian <laughs> stuck to peppermint tea and rubbed lavender oil in his pulse points. Which is fine. If it works and works quick, which it don't. You know, I do not want to wait a whole day waiting for my head to stop exploding. <laughs> we sat by the grass near the lake. It's one of the only places where you stand a chance of not getting hit by a football or something. <laughs> Kian took his T-shirt off. 
He said, it's getting so hot. Yeah, but it wasn't. You know, the sun was out, sure, but there wasn't much oomph to it. I said, it's all the alcohol still in your blood, boozer. He said, yeah, well, it's the last time. <laughs> Keen lay back on the grass. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> the grass, it, it had just been cut and the smell was... Oh, <laughs> made me a bit woozy. <laughs> I felt Keen's arm next to mine. I wanted to make love to him so fucking much. Oh, I feel you next to me. <laughs> You're warmer than that. Oh, Kian asked if I fancied nice cream. I said, yeah, because he knew he wouldn't get one just for himself. He went to put his T-shirt back on. I said, wait, wait. I started brushing the grass from his back. I did it slowly, deliberately, slowly, slipping my fingers beyond the lip of his chinos. He said, I won't be able to stand up if you keep doing that. I said, I've got no idea what you mean. <laughs> His torso shook as he laughed. Oh, I love the way he laughs. <laughs> Makes me laugh. <laughs> he said, what flavour do you want? Coconut? I said, yeah. He said, I won't be long. <laughs> I watched him walk away. Oh, I love the way he walks. <laughs> oh, I wish I brought my camera. Oh, um, that's what I do. I'm a photographer. Art photography, not weddings and stuff. No, I have done that to make, to make a bit of money. <laughs> Talia says my commercial photography is as potentially significant as my artistic stuff. She says one day when I'm grey and old and a world famous photographer, of course, <laughs> that my wedding photos will be masterpieces documenting the ever changing social attitudes of our age. Talia did a dissertation on art theory. It shows <laughs> too much sometimes. In the meantime, while I wait a million years for my wedding photos to be shown at the Tate, <laughs> I'm focusing on my artistic portraits. Needless to say, Kean's my main model. Only model. Oh, I took some brilliant photos of him yesterday morning. Oh, we went to Epping Forest. Oh, I made Kean. Asked Kian, nobody can make him do anything, <laughs> if he'd uh, cover himself in leaves and twigs like he was the wild spirit of the forest or something. <laughs> uh, I found a dead starling. It, it, it was beautiful. Like, no wounds or anything. I, I, I picked it up and showed it to Kian. I ordered him to hold it. He said, no way. I said, look, just lie down. I'll put it on your chest. I'll take the photos real quick. He still wouldn't. He's squeamish about that sort of stuff. And, as I said, no one can make Kian do anything. Oh, it's a shame. Feathers would look great against his skin. Oh, he was naked. Did not mention that bit. <laughs> of course he was. <laughs> Your skin is ecstasy. <laughs> oh, what was I saying? Kian, um... Getting ice creams, yeah. It was taking so long. And the pavilion, where he would have gone, it's only a couple of minutes away, behind the nearby trees. I was worried he might not have any money or a card in him. He never thinks about stuff like that. <laughs> and if Kian can't pay, he would just stand there waiting for someone to come to the rescue. Oh, and um, who's that someone? Hmm. Oh, hello. <laughs> and if you're wondering why I didn't just phone him, I couldn't. When we're out together, we use my phone. Keen hates carrying things or having stuff in his pockets. <laughs> he travels so light, he almost floats. Okay. I'm going to go see what happened to Keen. <laughs> I'm strolling across the grass. There's a definite chill in the air now. I like it. Prefer it. Fresh October weather. Though it's um April now, of course. <laughs> What's that quote about April being the cruelest month by... um? Walt Whitman? No, um, Yates? Someone? Oh, I'm plus a poetry. I ain't got the patience. I ain't got the patience for reading full stop, you know. I'd rather be doing something. Keen loves reading. <laughs> I, I've watched him reading for hours. I, I've taken photos. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes he gets so lost, he doesn't even know I'm there. I like it when he gets lost. It means I can keep finding him. Hmm. T.S. Eliot. 
April month. April? <laughs> okay, I'm approaching the pavilion now. There's a few people sitting outside. Is Kian one of them? Nope. Inside? <laughs> Any sign? <laughs> no. Hmm. <laughs> well, where's he got to? I, I, I couldn't have passed him on my way here unless he took another route back, but why would he do that? There's a person behind the counter who says, can I help you? He, he's got a badge on his lapel with Andy written on it. I say, hello, Andy. I, I'm looking for my boyfriend, a fiance. He, he said he was coming here to get some ice creams. He's wearing a T-shirt with Andy says, with the universe on it. Yeah, yeah, he was here. Two cornets, right? Oh, don't tell me. You were the coconut. I manage to chuckle and say, did you happen to see which way he went? It's just he hasn't come back to. And he says, sorry, I didn't. Perhaps someone outside might be able to help. I say, thank you. And he says, hope you enjoy your ice cream. I say, I'm sure I will. And he says, have a nice day. I say, and you. I go outside. There's a couple of teenagers sitting at a table. I say, sorry to bother you. They look at me like zombies have eaten their brains, but I give it a bash anyway. I say, you haven't seen a man come out about my age holding two ice creams. He's wearing a T-shirt with a voice behind me says, with the universe on it. I saw him. It's the one with a toddler. Toddler's in a pushchair. I say, Jap and see which way he went. She says that way and points in the opposite direction to where I was waiting. I say, are you sure? The one was giving the toddler half a donut. She says, yeah. I say, oh, okay. Thank you. She says, I hope you find him. I say, I'm sure I will. I start walking in the direction she'd pointed. I'm not actually running now, but I am walking a bit faster as an ice cream. On the ground. It's covered in ants. It looks like pistachio flavour. That's Kian's favourite. There's an old man sitting at a bench. I say, excuse me, did you happen to see the person who dropped this? He says, some jogger. I say, jogger? He says, jogger. I say, did you happen to see which way he went? He points across the grass at some trees. I say, thank you. I run. Yeah, I'm running now across the grass. Some kids are playing with a frisbee. It almost hits me. I almost smile. I'm amongst the trees now. It's even cooler. It smells of earth. Kian! A few birds flutter. Another ice cream and more ants. So many ants and coconut. Kian! A man's throwing a stick for his dog. The man looks at me and says, you lost someone? I say, my boyfriend. He says, T-shirt with the universe on it. In a rush. I say, yes. He says, he went that away. He's pointing towards the tennis courts. I say, thank you. I nearly trip over his dog. And the man yells, careful. I run faster. I'm approaching the tennis courts. People are playing. I can hear the sound of the ball being it. I can hear insects buzzing. That's Kian's T-shirt. On the grass. I pick it up. It's wet with sweat and ants. So many ants, they start crawling up my arm. I brush him off. I shake his T-shirt. Kian, I shake his T-shirt. Kian, I run. I pass another tennis court. No sign of Kian. I run. I pass another tennis court. No sign of Kian. I run. I pass another... An ambulance. On the other side of the tennis court. There's a small crowd. The ambulance starts to drive away. Kian? Kian? There's a wire fence around the court. How do I get to the other side? I run. How do I get to the other side? I run. How do I get to the other? A path. I run down it. Kids are kicking a ball. Get out my fucking way. They yell something after me. I don't hear what it is. I don't care. I run out the path. I turn the direction of the ambulance is driving out the park. Stop. I run. I run. The ambulance is turned down the main road. Run, run. I can't see anymore. Run. The small crowd's dispersing. Wait, wait. Who, who did they take away? A woman says, a young man. I say, shirtless. She nods. I say, well, what, what was wrong with him? She says, on drugs. I say, no, he wasn't on drugs. I know him. The man says, he tried to run across the tennis courts. I thought he was drunk. I say, no, he wasn't drunk. We were just sat by the lake. He went to get a teenager. Says, he climbed over that fence. Amazing. The woman says, drugs. I say, he wasn't on bloody drugs. I was only with him 20 minutes ago. This is his t-shirt. The teenager says, there's ants in it. Shit, I shake his t-shirt. The woman says, he collapsed. Right there. She points. The man says, he didn't know where he was. The teenager says, there's ants in your arm. Shit, shit, I brushed the ants off my arm. The woman says, well, drugs or no drugs, lucky the ambulance was passing. The driver saw what was going on. I say, what hospital did they take him to? The woman says, no idea. The teenager says, there's ants in your neck. Shit, shit, I brushed the ants off my neck. The man says, to London. I say, are you sure? He says, I heard him say it. I start running towards the gate. Sweat's trickling down my back. Or is it ants? I should take my t-shirt off. I, take, I should take it off and shake it. Oh, no time. I'm out of the park. Are there any cabs in sight? No. Shall I thumb a lift? Oh, no one will stop. I wouldn't stop. I run down approach road. Run. I can hear the blood pulsing in my ears. My feet are going slap, 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 slap. I'm on Cambridge Heath Road now. Run, slap, past the museum. Run, slap, run. I feel I'm falling more than running. Falling forward and my legs are trying to keep up. Run, run, run. Slap, slap, slap. What's that whistling noise? What's that whistling noise? What's that? It's me, gasping for breath. Run, gas, slap. I run across the street, a car. It nearly hits me. The driver yells something. Run, slap, gas, slap, gas, slap. I'm on Whitechapel Road now. I can see the hospital. Run, 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 gas, 
slap, gas, gas, slap. I run across the main road. Cars, beep, drivers, yeah, I want to yell back, but I haven't got the puff. I'm running the steps to the hospital two at a time. I'm sweating, or is it ants? Shake my shirt, no time, my vision's a little blurred. Am I going to faint? I'm in the hospital. People, trolleys, noise, where do I go? Where do I, where do I? Reception desk, people waiting, push past. I'm here to see the one behind the desk says, there is a queue, you know. This is an emergency. Everything's an emergency. She goes to turn back to the others, but my boyfriend was brought here. Ambulance, his name's Kian Holpin. I need to see him, I need to see him, I need to see him. The woman looks at me above her glasses. She checks her computer. It takes 152 years. She says, there's nothing here yet. Go to a and &E. I say, a and &E. She says, accident and emerge. I know what it fucking is. Where is it? She says, follow the signs. And if you use language like that again, I'll have you. I run down the corridor. Someone says, no running. I slow down. Then run. Another a and &E sign. I run faster. Someone says, no running. I slow down. Then run. Another a and &E sign. Run faster. No running. Slow down. Then I'm here. A and E doors are pushed through them. There's people on chairs, people on trolleys, and people are standing. A lot of them are crying. I want to yell, Kian! But I don't. There's a nurse sitting at a desk. Is that a reception desk? Has A and E got a reception desk? I go up to her and say, Kian, Kian uh, Holpin, he, he was brought here from Victoria Park. When? Um, just now, half an hour ago, he, he collapsed and his name's not on the system yet, but that might be because. What does he look like? Um, he's not wearing a t shirt. I've got it here. This is it. A voice nearby says, Yes, he's here. It's a nurse. He steps closer. He says, the doctor's with him at the moment. There's a waiting room over there. I want to see him. Are you his family? I'm his fiance. Who's his next of kin? I am. He must have some. There's foster parents in Norwich. I don't know their names. He hasn't seen them in years. I'm his family. He's mine. Look, if you just wait in the waiting room, the doctor will. Kian, as you can see, we're very busy in here. And I want to see him. Look, if you don't wait in the waiting room, I'll have the doctor escort you. For... OK, OK, OK. But I want to see him as soon as you will. I go into the waiting room. There's a woman in there. She's crying. She's holding the tissue. She looks at me but doesn't say anything. I don't say anything either. I'm glad we're not saying anything. I stand next to the door. There's a round window in it like the ones on ship's portal. There's doctors and nurses rushing backwards and forwards. They look worried. There must have been a bad accident somewhere. I sit down. I stand up. I sit down. I stand up. I go to look through the portal again. The woman with the tissue says, I'm here with my son. He collapsed in the garden. I say, oh, but I'm not really listening. I go to the water cooler. There's some water in it, but all it does is gurgle. I say, you think they'd at least keep this working? I sit down. I stand up. I sit down. I feel Kian's T-shirt is still damp with his sweat. Are there any ants on it? No. Are there any ants on me? The one with the tissue says, he'd been acting odd all morning. He, he had a temperature. I thought it was just a hangover. He was out last night. Some club. The door opens. It's a doctor. She's got a birthmark on her face. She looks at me and says, are you the friend of the man from the park? I say, fiance, yes. She indicates I should go outside. We go outside, we tuck in a corner. She says they're still carrying out some tests, but what's wrong with him? We'll know that when we get the results back. I want to see him. I need to ask you some questions first. Is he conscious? When I left him, he wasn't conscious, no, but he's drifting in and out. Has he asked for me? He's not saying anything we understand, just odd words. He'll be scared when he wakes up if I'm not with him. I assure you, he's very calm. Calm? I really do need to ask you some questions. Please, you'll be helping him by answering them. OK. You went to the park? Yes. You went there together? Yes. Were you with him when he... Uh, no, um, he, he went to get ice creams and... Have you been with Kian all day? Uh, yes, uh, we live together. He stays at mine. Has he taken any medication at all? No. No recreational drugs? No. Were you with him last night? Yes. What did you do? We went to Colour Me Moonlight, the club. Yes. She looks at me for a second. Then indicate someone to come over. I can't see who. I say, and before you ask, he didn't take any drugs there. He won't even take paracetamol. Another doctor appears. He's wearing a face mask. He's got bushy eyebrows. The doctor with the birthmark whispers something in his ear. He looks at me and says, please go to the waiting room. I say, but she said I could see him as soon as I answered. The doctor with the birthmark says, I didn't say that. I say, you did. The doctor with the bushy eyebrows says, waiting room. Now, this is serious. OK. 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 I go back into the waiting room. There's a middle-aged couple in there as well now. They're both wearing green jackets. I sit down, I don't say anything. I feel Kian's t-shirt, it's still damp with his sweat. Are there any ants on it? No. The woman with the tissue says, their daughter's been taken ill. Same thing as my son. I say, oh, but I'm not really listening. The man with the green jacket says, her daughter. We're just work colleagues. I feel Kian's t-shirt, still damp with his sweat. Are there any ants on it? No. The woman with the green jacket says, I got a phone call from a neighbour. I was at the checkout. The man with the green jacket says, the garden centre. I say, oh, but I'm not really listening. I stand up, portal. Everyone's rushing everywhere. 
There must have been a bad accident somewhere. The woman with the green jacket says she just rushed out the house, apparently. Didn't know where she was. She collapsed on the pavement. The man with the green jacket says, my opinion, heat stroke. I say, it's not bloody heat stroke. It's not even warm out. The woman with the tissue says, did the doctor say anything about your fiance? What? Oh, they're still carrying out tests. The man with the green jacket says, that means they know nothing. I say, what's wrong with the bloody air conditioning? I'm boiling. The man with the green jacket says, I told you, heat stroke. I say, it's hot in here, not outside. You need hot sunshine to get fucking heat stroke. He says, no, you don't. Heat stroke's just the failure of the body temperature regulating mechanism. To oh, do fuck off. I stand up, open the door. I go outside. I need a drink. Voices yell, let us through, let us through. A trolley was his past. My headache's coming back. My t-shirt's wet with sweat. I need a drink. Let us through, let us through. I go outside. There must be a Coke machine somewhere. I walk down the corridor. There's an announcement being made, but I can't make out what it's saying. A Coke machine. Have I got any change? Oh, yes! Oh, fuck! How does this bloody machine work? Have I ever used a machine like this? I must have done. When? Last through! Last through! I drop some coins. Where'd they go? Fuck. I get on my knees. My headache's getting worse. I find a coin. Sweat's trickling down my back. Or is it ants? I still answer me. Another coin. Is that all of them? Yeah. I get to my feet. Last through! Last through! Do I put the money in the machine first? Have I got enough money? Have I got the right coins? Am I going to faint? Are they still answering me? I put the money in the machine. I press for a Diet Coke. Nothing happens. I press again. Nothing happens. Doesn't anything fucking work around here. I go to kick it, but... I know that colour hair. The person in that trolley. Against that wall. I walk towards the trolley. I know that dress. Talia. Talia. I grab her hand. She looks at me, but I don't think she sees me. Squeeze my hand if you can hear me, Talia. She doesn't squeeze. She looks so calm, peaceful. A voice nearby says, thank God you're here. It's Talia's flatmate. What's her name? I know her name. Her flatmate says, she's been like this for nearly an hour. We're in the flat and she comes rushing out of her room. Total panic. Didn't know where she was, who I was. And then she collapsed and there wasn't any acid going around last night, was there? No. Why does everyone keep asking? That boy over there, his two older brothers have been taken ill. Same symptoms as Talia and they were at Colour Me Moonlight last night as well. Talia's let go of my hand. She's hardly breathing. Talia, her flatmate calls for help. Talia is so, so tranquil, like she's just winding down. Talia, she's not breathing at all now. Talia, a nurse rushes over. She looks exhausted. She looks shocked. She feels Talia's neck. She feels Talia's wrist. She shakes her head. Talia's flatmate screams. The nurse tries to hold her. Last through, last through, Kian. I need to see Kian. Where's his t-shirt? I was holding it. Waiting room. I start walking back. There's the doctors I spoke to earlier. They're both wearing face masks and plastic gloves. They go into the waiting room. Last through, last through! I move out the way. I wait. I can feel sweat trickling down my back. Or is it an ant? I still answer me. I should take my t-shirt off. I'll go somewhere and I'll, I'll take my t-shirt off. I'll go. One of the doctors comes out. It's a doctor with the bushy eyebrows. He's got the one with the tissue with him. There's no quiet corner for them to tuck into. He says something to her. She cries out. Her legs give way. She screams. He holds her. The screaming come from the inside of the waiting room. It's the one with the green jacket. Last through, last through. I'm pushed. I'm thirsty. I've got a headache. Am I going to faint? I've got to get Kian's t-shirt. Last through, last through. I'm pushed. The doctor with the birthmark comes out of the waiting room. She's looking around. She's looking for someone. She's looking for me. I know she's looking for me. I don't want her to reach me, but I can't move. I'm pushed. I'm thirsty. I've got a headache. Am I going to faint? I can feel sweat trickling down my back. Or is it an ant? I still answer me. I should take my t-shirt off and shake it. I should have done that earlier. Shall I do it now? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it now. I'll go somewhere and I'll do it now. I'll go somewhere and I'll... The doctor with the birthmark seen me. She starts walking towards me. I don't want her to reach me, but I can't move. Last through, last through! The doctor with the birthmark's getting closer. Why don't they turn the air conditioning on? No wonder I'm hot. No wonder I'm thirsty. No wonder I've got a headache. The doctor with the birthmark's getting closer. I take a step back. I should take my t-shirt off. I'll go somewhere now. The doctor with the birthmark's in front of me. There's no corner to tuck into. The doctor with the birthmark says, I'm afraid I've got some bad. I say no. No. Don't tell me that. I manage just another step back. I'm against the wall. Something's sticking into me. Is it a light switch? It hurts. I want it to hurt. The doctor says, we did all we could. I say, no, no, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. I was talking to him three hours ago, less than that. He said he went to get ice creams. He said he wouldn't be long. I waited for him. I'm still waiting for him. He'll be very upset if he knows I'm waiting. And no, 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 don't tell me that. 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 I'm 
sitting on the edge of a bed. I'm wearing a surgical gown. I'm in a small room. A nurse. He's wearing a face mask and plastic gloves. He asked me to open my mouth. He puts a swab in my mouth. I'm not ill. It's Keon who's ill. Where is he? I need to see him. Oh, why are the lights so bright? The headache's getting worse. The door opens. It's a doctor. I've not seen this one before. Can't see much of her now. She's wearing a face mask and goggles and she sits in front of me. She asks me how I feel. I tell her I feel hot. I tell her I've got a headache. I tell her I need some paracetamol. She says she needs to ask me some questions first. I say, always questions first. What? Say that again. Before me and Keen went to the club? N nothing. W we were at home. Yeah. Yeah, it was just me and Kean. We slept. We slept all afternoon. Oh, we'd had a busy morning. We went to Epping Forest. I took some photographs. N no. N no, we didn't speak to anyone on our way there. Why should we speak to... Hey, eh? In the forest? No, it was just me and Kean. God, we were there a long time. Hours. I took some photos. I found a dead bird. A starling. <laughs> no, it wasn't wounded or anything. It was perfect. I, I wanted to show Kean. He's, uh, he's scared about... No. No, he didn't touch it at all. You can't make him do anything you don't want to. Yeah? Yeah. It was just me who touched it. Just me. While well, I'm in this room, I don't know where this is. Who are you? I'm meant to be looking for... What? Someone? Let go of me! No! I need to look for... The universe! No! I don't... I don't want an injection! No! Don't you understand? The universe is lost and I need to find it! I'm in bed. Staring at the ceiling. The lights! They're so bright! Starling! People keep talking about Starling. We're all made of stardust. Feel you next to me. Waiting for ice cream. Smell of grass. Woozy. He wears the universe. You're warmer than the sun. I need to find Starling. Ghost Nebula. I need to find... Have I still got ants on me? I love the way he walks. Starling. He danced with everyone. Starling. We're all made of... A brush grass from his back. Starling. Your skin is ecstasy. He had a song to finish. Ghost, the universe, skin, starling. Our story's just begun. Stardust, starling, wounded, perfect universe, starling, ghost, starling. Ants, starling, starling, skin, story, ecstasy, starling, starling, 
Starling, Starling, Starling, Starling, Starling, Starling, Starling, Starling, Starling, Starling, Starling, Starling, Starling. Starling, 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 Starling.